Slytherin, we look at um, the Second World War on the home front as it's seen through the Benary collection. So um, an unusual collection of works, perhaps. On the left, we have a work by Barnett Friedman. Barnett Friedman was um, an artist who was taught by Sir William Rothenstein, who had himself been an official war artist. He was also taught by Paul Nash, another official war artist. And in this painting, we see the preparations for D-Day. And I particularly like it that the painting is unfinished because you see something of the artist's technique here and how he sketched the figures. And it's very interesting that we have this set up of the figures sitting at the desk. So sort of the reverse of what's happening upstairs with the Nuremberg trials. But, you know, a similar way of making your composition in a, in a way. So from Friedman, we pass to a work by Hans Schläger. Hans Schläger was of um, German Jewish origin. He was not strictly a refugee in that he had already uh, left Germany and gone to America and then chose to come to England. On the other hand, he could certainly not have gone back, so in that sense he was a refugee artist as well. In the centre we have these four lino cuts by Bettina Adler. Um, she was a Czechoslovakian Jewish artist. She trained as a woodcutter and then her uh, training was cut short by the war. She came to um, Wales with her family and during the Second World War she worked in a factory. So these were created when she didn't really have access to her sculpting materials but she was still obviously anxious to create and we have a really um, sort of vibrant vignette there about life outside of warfare. Next to that, we have a work by Enid Abrahams, and on the other side is another work uh, signed with her married name, Dreyfus. This is obviously two exhausted soldiers sleeping. I really love this work. We don't get many chances to show it. Um, she worked in the services um, during the war. She was already a professional trained artist, but she would go around um, in air raids and things and just sketch people that she saw and then work them up into pictures afterwards. One of her pictures is in the Imperial War Museum, but she was not an officially commissioned war artist like Dame Laura. And then over here we have a tiny work by an artist called Eva Frankfurter. She was um, a German Jewish child refugee from Nazism and she trained at Central St Martins after the war and she always took as her subject people on the margins. So this is her refugee figure from after the war when many stateless people were sort of flooding Europe looking for homes. And finally in this room we have this fantastic uh, portrait of Simeon Alex Chima Onyejayako from 1962 and it's made by Joseph Otto Flatter and Flatter was another cartoonist and he was also present at the Nuremberg trials and made many sketches there which are now in the Imperial War Museum. This portrait which is from a little bit later is of his friend and neighbour. Um, they were sort of intellectual partners um, and they enjoyed sort of having discussions together and it just really nicely ties together those two immigrant generations. And then finally in this room, we have three further works which reference the refugee experience. I suppose I should start really with these two. On the left, we have Refugees by Joseph Herman, and on the right we have Refugees by Joseph Herman. Uh, the one on the right is a brand new acquisition. This is the first time We've shown it since it was in our collection, although we did show it about 10 years ago in an exhibition about Joseph Herman. And these two pictures together really show the entire refugee experience. So we see a typical refugee family here just grabbing their belongings and sort of on the run. But we know that the things like the spire and the moonlight are symbols of Warsaw for him. And then here we see a really exhausted refugee family, three generations just collapsed. They have some bagging there and they have each other and that's really all they have. And then finally, we have this more positive 
um, image of the refugees to finish on and this is from 1947 so just after the war and 1947 is a key year because that's the year that many um, displaced and homeless people are naturalized in Britain after the end of the Second World War and you can also see it's the time when new multicultural communities are starting to come in and be welcomed and that's what we have depicted here in a work by Oravida Pizarro who was the granddaughter of Camille Pizarro and the daughter of Lucien Pizarro and a painter in her own right.